Hi friends, welcome to Kalanjam. If you are working in the Angular, React, Vue.js development, okay, you might be calling the API regular basis using REST clients like Postman and Fiddler. There are many REST clients available in the market, but famous is like Postman and Fiddler. For this Postman and Fiddler, no more require when you have Visual Studio code. Because when you are installing Postman and Fiddler, it might be lightweighted, but when you open the application, it will use some memory of your system. To reduce the memory, or you don't want unwantedly using the Postman and Fiddler, we are going to use it in the Visual Studio code. For that, we have to install one extensions from Extension Explorer. Okay, that's it. You are not going to do anything. You can call the APIs from the Visual Studio itself. The API might be developed in any language like .NET or Java or PHP or any kind of language, but you can call it through VS Code the same way we do it in the Postman and Fiddler. Now I'm going to install the extension of REST client. Go to the Explorer, find the REST client extension from the REST client Explorer. You can see in the top the name called REST client. Okay, just install it, it's done and then you open some empty folder, okay, HTTP, I have the empty folder named called HTTP, I'm just selecting it, okay, I'm going to have one more folder in it, response, the name can be anything, just for my understanding I just put as a response, okay, then I'm going to create a new file, the extension should be dot HTTP. The name can be anything, but the extension should be dot HTTP. Okay, API dot HTTP. I have created one file here. Okay. Then I have an API with me. This is just a sample API for uh, showing to you guys. Okay, it's not installed in any server. It's just I'm going to run it in my local server. But the URL going to be changed then when you are calling in the Postman or VS Code. That's it. It's not going to do. There is no difference between when you are installing in the server or in, when you are running in the local system. Same way we are going to execute. Okay, I'm going to run this API now. I'm going to I'm going to VS Code now. Then API will be running in the URL of localhost double double four three zero two, the port number. Okay, here I'm going to get the get request right. When you type get, automatically you will be getting an option name called send request. Okay, by clicking this, you can send the request to the API and you will get the response in the right side window. Okay, I'm going to just click on get. URL student and HTTP version you have to mention 1.1 that's it okay this is only thing you have to type it here for the get method just send it okay 404 because you have a name API right so we didn't paste it in the thing so I have to paste it here API now I'm sending the request I'm getting high as a return message and status code is 200 okay connection is closed once the uh, execution completed the connection will be closed as it is the same way if you are sending any parameter also you can send it in the parameter but when you are going for a next URL you have to type hash because when you type hash in the next method will be realized otherwise it will be considered as a the above one so if you remove this the center case will go away okay you have to put hash symbol okay before going to that there is a one more thing you have to do it okay the url might get changed whenever you have a multiple environment like dev uat production okay in that case so i'm going to have the host name as a global variable for that you have to create a global variable with at host okay you can have it in the name and then you are going to paste this url here 
you are not, you no need to mention double quotes or single quotes. You just keep the URL as it is, and then remove this and flower bracket. In that, I am going to type host. Okay, the variable which I declared in the global. Now you send this request. It automatically gives the same request, but Whenever the UAT or dev environment comes, you can change the URL as a UAT or production anything. It will be easy to manage the API calls. Okay, and then next. And then there is a another method which is available with the parameter of name. Okay, the route is get name. I have to change the route now. Slash get name. And it's a parameter, right? So you have to call it as a after question mark and equal to. It's a string, right? So I'm going to as a column gm. I'm sending string as a column gm, and it should be contain the HTTP version, HTTP 1.1. And now you send the request. I'm just closing this. Sorry, it's not localhost UAT, right? It's a localhost, right? So that's the reason it's getting filed. And I'm going to send this one. See, I'm getting the Kalanji message written and 200 success code. Go to the API and check it. See, I'm sending, I'm getting the name and I'm returning as a name. The same. I'm not doing any transaction here because it's a sample one, right? So I'm not doing any transaction. The same way, post data, put data, delete data for everything, you can do it. I will show you for the post data because here I'm sending object, right? So I will be I will be showing the example for object as well. So now I'm going to put the hash in the here. You can mention it if anything like for note note purpose, or you can mention it get name or something like that. It will be like a same when you have a comments, right? So this method is for some purpose. Some getting the data or posting the data or deleting the data. So you will be mentioning the comments, right? The same way you are mentioning it here. Okay. And then I'm going to put the post. Post. And then method name should be post data. Post data. HTTP. You have to use the HTTP version 1.1, and then here one more parameter you have to provide, which is content type. Because I'm sending object, right? It should be in JSON, right? So that's the reason I'm mentioning as an application dot JSON. If you have authorization or authentication, you can provide the authentication bearer token. So you will be passing the tokens, right? Bearer token. So same way you can pass a bearer token as well. Okay, but as of now I don't have any token, so I'm just removing it, and then give on space, and then Open the bracket, and what all the parameters I have to send it as a in the object. Go to the class and verify. It's a student ID and student name and age. I'm going to provide student ID one. It should be in JSON, right? It should be in double quotes then. If it is string, you have to provide in double quotes this one because we have an integer for student ID, so that's the reason we are providing one. And then next is student name. Then equal to the double quotes column gm. And then next is age. Age will be 23. Now I'm sending this request. Let's see what is happening. I'm just something I type wrong here, which is equal to. I'm giving a space. That's the reason. No. After property name. Everything is correct. Okay. What the mistake we did it? It's a JSON, right? We have to provide in the colon. It should not be equal to right. Which we made the mistake. Then send request. See, I'm getting the value. 
suggestion we should not give equal that's the reason it got failed and we are getting the same object as a return because i have written the same way here in the api controller i'm getting the object i'm returning to the action result as a response to the same object okay so same thing i'm getting the same way you can write it for post put delete for everything okay i hope you guys enjoyed with this video if you have any doubts please comment in the comment section please do like comment and subscribe for more videos